Hey y'all, okay, so I'm getting real results here. Working out with Kiara Lachey, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and taking my ISO tea, y'all. I am really getting it in. Y'all can get these booty bands, y'all can get cute little workout outfits and everything from teamlachey.com. The link is down below in the description box. Okay, check out these results right here. Get into it. Y'all should also check out Waste Not Beads. Um, she sent me these and I really love them. But yes, y'all, get onto this ISO tea. I know they tell y'all, it's a scam but it's not like look at me and let's not forget about oh me get you some come on now get all moisturized and such let your natural hair live hey everybody what's up it's your girl bondi blue and i am back for another family or fiance review y'all this one was actually really good um this one was more so about the families beef among one another more so than the couple having beef you know we have craig and amy uh craig and amy actually met at essence fest in 2015 okay down here in new orleans yes and they are getting married in a month they are really there to get their families on one accord, okay? Specifically, Amy's family, because her sister has been an issue for them. And I believe the aunt, because it was her aunt, her sister, and her niece, and I believe that the aunt might have done a background check on Craig, which was very upsetting to him because Craig is a DJ. He's a successful DJ. He DJs for Keisha Cole. That's where he proposed to her at Keisha Cole's concert. And for... Amy's family to believe that because he's living so well, it must be something illegal. So they did a background check on him. He was offended by that. Even though I can understand him being offended and not liking them or feeling some type of way about them for that. Ultimately, I feel like what's the big damn deal? Okay. I wouldn't be offended if somebody did a background check on me because it's just kind of like, <laughs> ain't nothing to find out. So go ahead. But I'm also a very open person. So, you know, that's me. Amy and her sister actually have um, a bad relationship from childhood. It seems as if the sister always was jealous of Amy because she felt like Amy was their mom's favorite. And so that now has persisted until adulthood. Child, I know about beef with siblings, okay? <laughs> like, I know about beef with siblings. Me and my, my sister from my mom, uh, we're just now like getting into this place where we have a really good relationship. You know what I'm saying? As far as doing things together and being kind of, you know, on the same wavelength for the most part. Okay. She still, you know, <laughs> like I still be like, Oh, she needs to hang around me a little bit more. Um, but you know, ultimately, yeah, but we've always had like a tough relationship growing up for whatever reason. And then same thing with my brother and my sister from my dad. Like they are really close, but they're not really close with me. It's just, <laughs> it's just the way it, it's always been, you know, it's always kind of just been me by myself for the most part. So I'm, I'm kind of used to that. So I could see how those relationships throughout the years just have, you know, a negative tone to them. And there is not really much you feel like doing. Like you feel some type of way. If you really want to go there, we can go there. But a lot of times you don't want to go there. Because as soon as you go there, they're going to try to flip it on you and act like whatever your issue is with them is not a big deal. You know, their issue with you is the problem and all of that type of shit. Like, <laughs> it, yeah, child, don't get me started. But I do get Amy's point of view about how she doesn't really want to deal with the issue with her sister because it's like, are you really ready for those floodgates to open? Are you? Because I feel like you're not going to be able to handle it if I really come at you with everything about how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have felt like that often about my siblings. Craig has an issue with his oldest son. Craig has six kids by six different women. And this oldest son, he was not able to be there for him like he should have been. A little bit the mother's fault and, uh, and mostly because of Craig's uh, job. Him being a DJ, he travels a lot, not always in the same space. Um, and the times when he was trying to have his son, I think that mom kind of threw an interference in there somewhere because she didn't want her son to leave her. So, you know, she tells her son that the daddy don't want him there and tells the daddy that the son don't want don't want to be there with him and so you know miscommunication 
for the past 20 some odd years of this boy's life. So all of the family get there, you know, and they sit down and everybody expresses what their issues are. And a lot of it is just feeling like her family doesn't really know Craig and Craig's family feeling like they want Craig to be accepted into her family the way they've accepted Amy. That's understandable. The niece wants her mom and her aunt to fix the issue. I understand getting caught in between, but uh, there's something about the niece that kind of was throwing me off a little bit and I can't even really touch on it. But at the end of the episode, um, when they reveal how the niece and the aunt didn't go to the wedding, even though Amy reached out to them, I feel like it said a lot about maybe what was going on that I was picking up on, you know what I'm saying? Um, like she's pretending to, you know, be caught in the middle, but really she's more on her mom's side, like, which is understandable. That's your mom. But, um, I still feel like something is not quite right with the mom. I don't know what has happened to her. She spoke about how she almost died. I don't know if that has anything to do with the way she seems to, you know, speak or communicate. But, um, either way I could understand why it's difficult to have a conversation with her. But the sister goes on about how the problems they've had, they've had for a long time and, you know, the problems from the past are causing an issue with them in the present. And then she asks if Craig is hiding anything from her sister. And Craig's mom goes off on everybody. She says, y'all do not know Craig, but Craig worked very hard traveling late at night to DJ all over the place so that he could eventually be the big DJ that he is today. He worked hard for this and he never sold drugs. He never did anything like that. So I don't understand why when you see a black man being successful and living nice, the first thing you think is that he must have gotten it some illegal way. And to say that, you know, to another black family, I think it was putting things in perspective for them. Like, how dare you? How dare you perpetuate such ignorance to think that this man who has said he's a DJ, who proposed to your family member at Keisha Cole's concert, obviously he's making money. Why do you still feel like there's something that he's hiding from you? You know what I'm saying? Or even like there's something that you don't know about him that's your business in the first place. You know, I feel like people be trying to know somebody on a level that they don't need to know them at. <laughs> you just need to know that they mean for the betterments of your family member, that they won't try to hurt your family member. And we're not talking about in relationships. We're just talking about physically, you know, in, in, in financially, don't come into my, you know, family members life to, you know, fuck them over and steal money from them or something like, you know, don't be, don't be that, don't be a scammer. Basically that's the most anybody can hope for. Don't be a, don't be with a psycho and don't be with a scammer. Craig's son speaks on how, he wants to work on their relationship and Craig was like, I want to work on our relationship too. They need to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one, and they will. Okay. So they separate and Craig talks to Amy's family about the six kids by six different women and how the only one of those women that he has issue with only communicates with Amy. Amy has really integrated into his life in a positive way. Um, and, and I always feel like whenever women enter a relationship with a man who has children, they should always be coming from the standpoint of trying to blend into that situation as seamlessly as possible and be there for the child in whatever capacity that they need to be there for the child. Because I, I we was just watching like one of the Medea movies and y'all remember when Lauren London and Tiana Taylor were like, you know, baby muffa and the girlfriend by, you know, and all of that. <laughs> and it was funny because she was like, that's not my baby. I'm not going to hold that baby. That's not my baby. And I'm just like, how can you be with a man and not love and care about his kid? Especially when they're like babies and, you know, adorable and everything. It's just kind of like, bitch, what is wrong with you? Like, that's a bad sign about any woman that will enter into your life and not try to create some type of connection to your offspring. Something's wrong with her. Trust me. Then they talk about Craig's business and how he not only DJs himself, but he has a business where he contracts out 250 other DJs around the world. Okay. So Craig is making money, money. And then on top of that, him and Amy have a photo booth business. So it's just kind of like, you know, not only am I doing my thing, but I'm helping your, your, you know, niece, sister, auntie do her thing. You know what I mean? Like, 
out of here with that. <laughs> like, I hate when people come at people, you know, on, on some bullshit, you know, oh, you look like a drug dealer, you got money. And really, it's like I'm a businessman, for real, for real. I got LLCs and shit. So then he brings up the background check. And he expresses how he wasn't happy about that. And they feel like based off of Amy's past relationships, the, the background check was warranted. And they're entitled to feel that way. I feel like I understand where he's coming from, but it, it's just not a big deal. Like, I feel like you should do background checks on people you start to date. And if you have the, the you know, the possibility, the capacity to do that, then you should do that. Because people are out here perpetrating, faking and fronting, being married, having children, uh, you know, being ex-convict shit. You don't know. OK, but it's stuff that somebody should definitely talk to you about when you start to lay down with them, have sex with them, have a relationship with them. And you should know those things just in case before you get all caught up in whatever representative they're showing you. So I'm not upset about the background check personally, but I do understand how he feels about it. Then they get into the relationship between Amy and her sister. And it annoys me the way they ask him if he has tried to get her to fix the relationship with her sister as if that's his responsibility. He says, yes, he has many times, but ultimately that is not his responsibility because it's an issue that's been going on since before he came into the picture. That is up to the sister and Amy to fix that. But I also feel like when I was watching that they were putting more responsibility on Amy and Craig to fix the relationship with Amy's sister than Amy's sister. And Amy's sister is the one that caused all of this shit. We gonna get into that. She cries. She wants them to fix the relationship. And Amy says that it's going to take baby steps for them to fix it. At this point, they're at dinner, y'all. I'm sorry. Like, I wasn't really writing, you know, oh, we're at dinner now. <laughs> I was just like, okay, and then this happened. Um, but Amy says baby steps. And then Amy explains that her sister pressed charges on her daughter. So the sister's daughter and Amy's daughter got into an argument. And then the sister called the police and then filed charges against her niece over an altercation that they had. Now, I don't know if it was a physical altercation or not, but my cousins, my aunts have gotten into physical fights and not once did anybody think to call the police. The only time you call the police is when the person is, you know, wielding a weapon, you know, or somebody is really, really hurt. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time in my family, if, if anybody got into a fight, you was breaking that shit up before it got too bad. You know what I mean? And damn sure nobody needed to call the police to break up a family fight. You know, especially not amongst cousins or something like that. You know, we didn't really fist fight like that um, amongst my cousins. Like we, we, we had a lot of love for one another. So it, even if we disagreed, it wasn't a lot of fist fighting that happened amongst us. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think my sister, you know, the older set of cousins, because my sister is with the older set of cousins. Like, I don't even think that they fist fought or anything like that. But either way, if they did, nobody would call the police and press charges about it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But I always feel like calling people need to be more reserved with when they call the police. People love calling the police for shit that can be handled, um, you know, with, with enough family members in the room to separate two people and, you know, have one person get in the car and go about their business, whatever. But I just feel like that's unnecessary. And Amy wants her to drop the charges because she hasn't dropped the charges. And then she tries to act like, you know, oh, the state picked up the charges when that's not the truth, apparently, because later on she went through the proper channels to drop the charges once they made up. But it was the point that you would even do that to your own niece. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, y'all, my family don't work like that. So I feel like that's flaw. And I understand why Amy is upset about it. So Josh talks to uh, the niece. OK, Josh is Craig's son. And he and the niece talk and they both talk about, you know, whatever their relationships are with the family member. Mainly how Josh wants more of a relationship with his dad. And so him and Craig have a one on one conversation in which they talk about the misunderstanding about how uh, Craig, I think, was living in Vegas or something like that, living somewhere where he was working. And Josh came to visit him for an extended amount of time. And he said it was the best time of his life. And he went home to his mom thinking that his dad was going to call and ask for him to come back. And he called and he was like, well, you know, just stay there with your mom. And that broke him like he had a breakdown after that. It was very difficult for him feeling like his dad didn't want him. When really what happened is that Craig said his mom said that he was miserable and he didn't want to go back. 
I think the mom didn't want to lose her son. Kind of, kind of like Kiowa in Love and Marriage Huntsville, except for worse, because this person actually got in between that relationship to the point where they lost years because of a misunderstanding. And I know, you know, we don't want to just blame the mom because it's not all her fault. You should have tried harder. And he admitted that. But see, that type of miscommunication, that was not right. That was not right for you to, you know, tell the daddy the son didn't want to be there and then tell the son, you know, that the daddy didn't want him there. You can tell that that's probably what happened, but they don't really want to speak on her for whatever reason. And that's fine because like I said, he should have tried harder. A lot of y'all men allow the women to dictate the situation because they are the mothers. They should dictate the situation, especially if they mean their child's uh, best interests overall, meaning they're not abusing their child. OK, y'all give up too easily. Y'all let them, you know, get in between the relationships y'all have with y'all children because y'all don't want to deal with it. Like you can't blame nobody but yourself for not trying hard enough. If there's any facet of your life where you need to give your motherfucking all, it's with your children, period. But Craig apologizes for dropping a ball. He feels like a failure and he does humble himself and apologize to his son. And he says that there's anything he can do to make it better, then that's what he wants to do. And I was just like, that's really good. Like, I, I really appreciated that. I like Craig. I like Craig and Amy together. Um, their relationship seems to be such a benefit to the other person you know what I'm saying like it's obvious that he need a woman with, with sweetness like her and she needed a man with stability and strength like him like that's a, a very beautiful match to me they talked to Tracy and Josh is gonna be a part of the wedding like I think it was dope you know they watched him and his son go have him try on the tux and that whole thing it was really nice and Amy talks about wanting an apology from her sister and Tr Tracy suggests that they talk alone. So they talk alone. And her sister says that the police made her sign a witness statement and the witness statement was actually, um, you know, the paperwork to press charges, I guess. But she does admit that it could have been handled better. This makes Amy feel like she's not taking accountability and she doesn't want to continue the conversation. So she's like, if you're not going to keep it real, we don't need to talk. So she walks away and the sister goes and talks to her daughter. And her daughter is like, well, did you explain to, you know, Amy how you felt? And she was like, no, because it's obviously hard for her to communicate how she feels. And I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a, you know, a speech impairment there, you know, like that, that heaviness of the tongue. So I don't know what happened to her. Um, cause something made me feel like she might, might've gotten an accident or something happened to where she almost died. And, you know, it's kind of harder her, for her to communicate now. I'm not sure, but that's kind of what I was getting from bits and pieces of what she was saying. But either way, the niece made her mom go out there and talk to Amy again and try again. And she apologizes. She says, I apologize. I'm sorry. It could have been handled better and I will do what I have to do to drop the charges. And then Amy is able to accept that. And she says, it's, you know, it's going to take baby steps, but she loves her. So they hug it out and they let it go. So they've resolved a lot. This family resolved a lot of their issues. Amy was still on the fence about asking her sister to come to her wedding, but she decided at the end of it all to invite her. You know, of course, everyone gives their blessing. Like, I don't know how you could not. <laughs> like, these two grown-ass people, why could you not give them your blessing? They're great for each other. Um, but she did invite her sister to the wedding, and her sister and her niece ended up not coming to the wedding. She called them several times and they didn't answer. I don't know what that's about, but something makes me feel like that jealousy thing is just deep. I think some siblings, you know, they see certain things growing up and, you know, there's a jealousy thing that happens. And instead of them getting past that jealousy, they kind of let it fester and form how they feel about their sibling. You know, um, as if the sibling did something to them because they're jealous of them. Like that's the way she was trying to spin it. Like Amy had done something to her her whole life when really you've been reacting to however you feel like Amy has been treated by y'all parents. Therefore, you know, you're not really treating her based off of how she treats you. You're treating her based off of, you know, your feelings about how y'all parents treat y'all differently, you know, which is fucked up. But still, like, come on now. Like I, I've often felt like that, too. I don't know what y'all want. <laughs> like, what do you want from the babies? You know what I'm saying? We're, we're the babies. I don't know what y'all want from us. Give me a break. <laughs> 
you know? But either way, yeah, this episode definitely touched on some real shit that I have dealt with before as far, you know, as far as ha having issues with your siblings. So, yeah, it was a good episode, y'all. They did get married. It was a beautiful wedding. They showed the pictures. I was like, yes, okay. <laughs> so, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you.